So I'm here with an engineer from the uh, Google Data APIs team uh, who just had an interesting release today. So uh, first, could you introduce yourself to the viewers? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Jun Yang. I am one of the engineers on the GData team. And today we released the GData JavaScript client library. And we are very excited about that. So uh, what is this client library? How is it different from the other client libraries that we have? Well, certainly it uh, uses JavaScript as its programming language. And if you haven't take a notice, JavaScript is the most popular language runtime in the world. Uh, it's deployed in every browser. So we think it'd be an interesting and uh, important language to, uh, to support. Great. So we've always been able to do some kind of read-only JSON-like things. Uh, so, so how is this different? Yeah, we have been uh, supporting that for about a year. Um, it's very useful. Um, with read-only access, you can already do very uh, many interesting applications. But this is uh, what I call floodgating, fl floodgate opening technology that changes the perspective that um, uh, not only it's uh, read-only of uh, uh, read and write access, but also with uh, Google's official um, authentication support, which is also and also cross-domain access so that you can host your application anywhere and still access Google's feeds. Great, so, so th this is a big deal. We haven't been able to do this before. This has always been kind of a limitation that, great, you can do the read-only stuff, but what about if you want to authenticate in and get access to different people's real information, write data back? Uh, for example, if you know, you're know you building a blog application in JavaScript, you'd want to actually you know, create blog entries and things like this. So how are you able to even do this? Isn't like the, the security model in the browsers that stops you doing this? Right. We fully work within the browser security model. So there's nothing, uh, no uh, security hole that we depend on. It, it's standard uh, Firefox and uh, IE um, security model. So, um, but still, there are many um, possibilities or combinations of techniques that you can use to enable uh, cross-domain support, especially with uh, server-side uh, padding to the result, we can actually achieve this. Great. So is, is this similar to the subspace uh, paper that was released, you know? I have heard of it, but I have not compared our technique with theirs, so um, don't know. Okay. Is it like implementation-wise, is it mag magical iframes within iframes and things like this? Or? Well, there are two levels of iframes, but uh, um, uh, the key is certainly to access the grandchild's iframe from grandparents and the w which the browser allows, even though the intermediate frame may be on a different domain. Um, and also uh, with server-side support of, uh, of padding and enough details to actually enable this technique, like um, whether you want to encode the uh, URL, uh, how to make the uh, large chunk of data available and chunk it up and, and make it available for the grandparent to pick up and all that. Great. So uh, on the client side, you can just write your entire application in JavaScript now. Yes. Uh, but the server side endpoints, uh, they still have to be aware of this technique, right? You can't just access anything without anyone allowing you and, and things like that. Right. Well, today, certainly, uh, the only uh, server side support are provided by, by the Google services. Um, but we hope that in the future um, this um, technique can be more widely deployed, that uh, third-party feeds can also support that. Okay, so what Google services uh, use this right now? Um, uh, today we're only releasing support for a calendar. Um, we don't pre-announce anything, but... Um, yeah, I, I think we will understand. So that's awesome. So that means that now I could build a calendar view in Ajax app that we could tie and create events on the server side into Google Calendar, uh, which we haven't been able to do before without having to have like a server side proxy or something like that. Right, right. The, the, uh, the consequence of today's release is basically you can create an application without any server side component involved, not even proxy a server, and uh, host it in any, anywhere, maybe a, a Google page, um, and be able to create a full blown calendar application. Great. Well, I'm really excited to see all of the cool read-write mashups that we get out of this, and uh, thanks so much for your hard work. Thank you.